So in the app acquisition journal entries, the first step is to eliminate equity. So we debit equity. Then we add the fair value adjustments to assets and liabilities. So we adjust for those. Then we credit the investment in the subsidiary. So we uh, eliminate, and that is a consideration paid. Then the second to last step before we can calculate goodwill, goodwill is the non-controlling interest. And that's what we'll look at here. And then the goodwill will be the balancing figure. Now, if we paid more than the fair value of the assets and liabilities, then we have goodwill and it'll be debited to the statement of financial position. If we pay less than what we receive, the fair value, then we made a bargain purchase. So it'll go to profit or loss as a gain on bar bargain purchase. So let's look, let's look at what IFRS 3 says about NCI. So it's in paragraph 19, it states that we can choose whether we want to value non-controlling interest. So that's in the ad acquisition journal entry at fair value or the proportional value of the subsidiary's assets and liabilities. So if we buy, if H buys a 75% share in S Limited, the non-controlling interest will be 25%. So the proportional value will be the total assets and liabilities of the subsidiary times 25%. If, that, if we choose the fair value, obviously the question will have to give you the fair value of the non-controlling interest at acquisition date. Something else that's important to note or to remember is that the company can choose at each acquisition. So for each business combination, the company can choose whether they want to value NCI at fair value or the proportional value of, of the assets and liabilities of the subsidiary. So it's not they're not bound by this forever. For every acquisition, they can choose again and they can choose a different method. And then Goodwill, in, uh, in paragraph 32, it says is the balancing figure. So let's look at the effects of valuing NCI at fair value or the proportional value. So if it's at the proportional value, we call this the partial goodwill method. Uh, you'll see why. So how do we calculate goodwill? That's the consideration that we paid. I keep on doing that. So consideration less what we received for that payment. So the fair value of assets and liabilities. So if you just look at these boxes, this the consideration we paid represents 75% of all the assets and liabilities of the subsidiary. Because we paid X amount to receive 75%. So if we bought a 75% stake like I drew here in the diagram. What did we receive? We received 75% of the assets and liabilities. So this 100% here relates to the full fair value of assets and liabilities of the subsidiary. So we deduct 25% Net, uh, for the non-controlling interest, and we're left with 75% of the fair value of assets and liabilities. So that's basically what we're doing. We're deducting 75. Uh, we're deducting the consideration paid, uh, or we're deducting the fair value of assets and liabilities. But 75% of that—that's what we purchased from the full amount that was paid. So make sure it's not 75% of the consideration; is the full consideration paid. So say one million less. 75% of the fair value of assets and liabilities. And that is the goodwill. And it's called partial goodwill because non-controlling interest is not part of this goodwill. There's no portion of non-controlling interest in this goodwill figure yet. It'll make more sense when we look at full goodwill. So if you look at the full goodwill, here it's a bit different. So here you can see we subtract the full 100% of the fair value of assets and liabilities. Now remember, we only purchased 75% of it. The other 25% is owned by the non-controlling interest. But we subtract the full 100% from what do we subtract it? From the consideration that we paid plus the fair value of non-controlling interest. So the cash we paid, say the 1 million, plus whatever the fair value is of the non-controlling interest. And this has to be valued. So this will, in a test, be given to you. So say that's 200,000 rand. So this full 2.1.2 oh, million rand, less 100% of the fair value of assets and liabilities, and that will give our goodwill or bargain purchase. 
Now, here you can see the Goodwill includes a portion for the non-controlling interest, which would be the fair value of non-controlling interest less the, the actual uh, fair value of assets and liabilities, the proportion of that. So that's the full uh, Goodwill method. To practice some questions to make sure that you understand both methods and how it affects the journals. But it's basically the calculation of goodwill or bargain purchase that will be affected. It's just a balancing figure. So you must just, basically, if they say fair value method, you take the fair value as given. If they say proportional, um, proportionate value of NCI, you take the fair value of assets and liabilities times the NCI percentage. Mm -hmm.